Hi, I am Dr. Sakib Mansoor and uh, this is my channel Learning Anatomy. We have started a series of lectures on the, the, uh, my, on the study of the spinal cord, neuroanatomy of the spinal cord. And this is the fifth lecture on that series. And uh, today we are focusing on the ascending tracts of the spinal cord, ascending tracts. So first of all, we should know what is the nerve fiber tract arrangement. The three spinal cords are divided into ascending tracts, descending tracts, and intersegmental tracts. So this is a beautiful diagram, which is a cross-sectional, which is a, a, a basically a schematic diagram. So the here are shown the descending tracts. We'll talk about them later on in the next video. And uh, maybe, and uh, this is the uh, uh, tracks which are the ascending ones. These go from uh, below, from the spinal cord to the higher centers. And uh, they, of course, convey the sensory sensations. They are convey the sensory sensation. This is the anterolateral system. Of course, these are in the white matter. This, these ascending tracks are part of the white matter, not this gray matter. We have talked about the gray matter already. And this is the dorsal column medial lemniscus system, which is the fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus. And this is the anterolateral system where we have the anterior spinothalamic tract. And uh, this is the anterior, uh, sp this is the anterior spinothalamic tract. And this is, this is the spinolivary tract. This is the spinotactyl tract. And this is the lateral spinothalamic tract. So this is a spinal lemniscus, which this, which one? Anterior spinothalamic tract, spinotactyl tract, and lateral spinothalamic tract. And here we have the anterior spinocerebellar tract and the posterior spinocerebellar tract. These, this is the anterolateral system, and this is the dorsal column medial lemniscus system. We'll study each and every of these one by one. So about the ascending tracts, a few nerve fibers ascend from the spinal cord to the higher centers and subserve to connect the spinal cord with the brain. So these are the sensory modalities which come from the nerve receptors via the dorsal root ganglion. I will show you these in the uh, done in the uh, three uh, third order neuron, first order, second order, and the third order. These bundles of the ascending fibers are termed as the ascending tracts, right? These, so, uh, I repeat, a few nerve fibers ascend from the spinal cord to the higher centers and subserve to connect the spinal cord within the brain. These are the ascending tracts. So the tract, a tract is a bundle of the fibers. Here you could see these are the neurons at the three levels, ascending tracts. These are the first order neurons, this is the second order neuron, and this is the third order neuron. So where does the first order neuron lies? The first order neuron lies in the dorsal root ganglion. It comes from a peripheral nerve ending receptor. We will uh, upload uh, a lecture on the nerve, nerve endings with, and uh, receptors, even the nerve receptors. And here it comes, that sensation, this is the nerve fiber. And coming here, this is the dorsal root ganglion. This is the first order neuron. And this is talking about the sensory system, the ascending pathways. And from here, this will be going here. This is neuron number two in the gray matter of spinal cord brain stem. This crosses the midline. It could be the spinal cord or the brain stem. It crosses the mid sign, goes to the opposite side, and ascends upwards, going to the thalamus. Where is th in the thalamus lies the third order neuron. And from this thalamus, the third order neuron is going into the sensory cortex, cerebral cortex, part, part that part of the uh, cortex which is sensory. So again, quickly, first order neuron in the dorsal root ganglion. Second order crosses in the spinal cord or brainstem and ascends into the thalamus where the third order neurons goes into the this cerebral cortex. So this is the main arrangement of the three uh, neurons. 
So again, you see, I've uh, pasted this one. First order neuron in the sensory ganglion, dorsal root ganglion. Second order neuron in the CNS, central nervous system. Exon always crosses midline. So uh, there we go. Third order neuron is in the thalamus. Third order neuron is in the thalamus. So again, focusing on the sending tracks, these transmit two types of afferent information which may or may not arrive consciousness. These are exteroceptive and proprioceptive. Exteroceptive, these are from the exterior, exteroceptive. Of course, they carry information arising from the outside the body, pain, temperature, and touch. These are the exteroceptive tracks. And the proprioceptive fibers, they carry information from the inside the body, from muscles and joints. So from the peripheral sensory endings, general information is carried through the nervous system by a series of neurons. This is already told you. This is the dorsal root ganglion, right? This is the first order, first order neuron. And this carries the information from the uh, nerve receptor to the, uh, this uh, second order neuron in the, uh, that crosses to the opposite side in the spinal cord or the brain stem. So, I will again highlight the three order neurons, first order, second order, and third order neurons. So this is the first order neuron. It has a full cell body in the dorsal root ganglion of the spinal nerve, right? So the first order neuron has the cell body in the dorsal root ganglion of the spinal nerve. A peripheral process serves to unite with the sensory receptor ending right you see sensory receptor ending while a central process enters the spinal cord through the dorsal root ganglion to sign up with the second order neuron so here this is fiber coming from the uh, you know sensory receptor ending sensory receptor ending this process coming from there and this is the the second one coming that that goes attaches to the uh, dorsal root to synapse on the second order neuron which goes to the thalamus. So the second order neuron gives origin to an exon that decussates. It all decussates means crosses to the opposite sides. Decussation means crossing to the opposite side and rises to a higher level of the CNS synapsing there with the third order neuron. So third order neuron, this lies in the thalamus mostly, mostly it lies in the thalamus. And from this neuron, a projection fiber originates th that reaches to a sensory region of the cerebral cortex, right? This is a third order neuron, you can see in the picture. This is the thalamus giving rise to the third order neuron that reaches the sensory cortex. And that these fibers are the projection fibers. When we will study the white matter of the cerebrum, we will study what are the projection fibers. So many neurons in the ascending pathways give rise to the branches and provide a main input to the reticular formation. So reticular formation gets the many neuron input to that, which serves to activate the cerebral cortex and serves to maintain the wakefulness which is the consciousness so branches connect to motor neurons also which participate in the reflex motor activity so this is very important that uh, some of the branches of this sensory neuron these are the sensory neurons the sending tracks carrying information from below uh, part of the body, nerves, muscles, skin. And uh, these are also connected to the motor neurons and they participate in the reflex muscular activity. Reflex muscular activity. So these, this is a list I will not dis discuss in this lecture of the today. You see these are the pathways which are shown in the picture. Lateral spinal thalamic tract, spinal lemniscus, right? and anterior spinothalamic tract, spinal lemniscus. These two are the spinal, lem spinal lemniscus. And then th this is the dorsal column medial lemniscus system, fasciculus calicinus and fasciculus cuneatus. 
This is the medial meniscus. And this discussion will be done with each and every this part we'll discuss separately. The functions I can summarize for you for here. Lateral spinothalamic tract subserves uh, to convey painful and temperature sensations. Pain and temperature travels via lateral spinothalamic tract. And light or crude touch and pressure travels through anterior spinothalamic tract. And discriminative touch goes through posterior white columns, tarsal column, posterior white column, tarsal column, medial meniscus system, discriminative touch. The posterior white column, tarsal column, medial meniscus system also convey information from muscles and joints pertaining to movement and position of different parts of the body. Vibratory sensations too are conveyed via the posterior white columns, right? So the vibrations and uh, the information from the muscles and joints, right? Proprioception and uh, discriminative touch. These are the sensation carried through the posterior white columns. This is again a beautiful uh, table. This is showing the path and their functions. Tarsal column, medial meniscus system, discriminative tough touch, conscious proprioception, vibration, and pressure. And uh, this is the anterolateral system, the spinothalamic tract, right? And uh, which is the basically spinal meniscus. Pain and temperature goes through the lateral spinothalamic tract. And overview, okay, what is that? The overview is that the three neuron systems, first degree, second degree, and third degree. First degree neuron, the cell body in the dorsal root ganglion. This DRG is the dorsal root ganglion. And second order neuron decussates in the gray matter of the spinal cord. And third order neuron thalamus. It, it, the, that cell body originates in the thalamus from VPL nucleus, ventral postulateral nucleus, and it goes to the sensory cortex. Unconscious information from skin, subcutaneous tissue, muscles and joints arrive to cerebellum through the anterior and posterior spinocerebellar tracts and cuneocerebellar tract. So which are the tracts? Carrying information from skin, subcutaneous tissue, and muscles and joints, cerebellum, they reach the cerebellum through the anterior and posterior spinocerebellar tracts and cuneocerebellar tracts. Of course, they contain the word cerebellar. So, pain, temperature, and tactile information are conveyed to superior colliculus of the midbrain via the spinotactyl tract for the purpose of spinovisual reflexes, right? So, there is superior colliculus. We have already studied the midbrain in detail. The midbrain anatomy is discussed with you in detail. Spinoreticular tracts, they serve as pathway from the muscles, joints, and skin to the reticular formation, spinoreticular. Then is the spinoolivary tract, serves as an indirect pathway for additional afferent information to convey to the cerebellum. This is written over here, right? that you can see, but I will still uh, try that I also uh, give this information of uh, the uh, sensations carried to, to the cerebellum separately. The muscle spindles, tendon organs and joint receptors are the receptors. Muscle spindles, tendon organs and the joint receptors, right? Carries the unconscious muscle joint sense. And first order uh, neuron is the posterior root ganglion. But the second order here is the nucleus dorsalis, right? This is not substantia gelatinosa. This is the nucleus dorsalis. And this is anterior and posterior spinocerebellar tract is the pathway. Anterior and posterior spinocerebellar. And destination is the cerebellar cortex, not the cerebral. Not the cerebrum. This is the cerebellar cortex, not the cortex of the cerebrum. So this is the, was the brief lecture and uh, I thank you very much. I will discuss with you the details of the each and every tract, what is the substantia involved or not, and why this is involvement of the 
nucleus dorsalis like in this uh, second order neuron uh, the cerebellum thank you very much for listening we'll and we'll be giving the next lecture very soon i was late because i wasn't feeling well and uh, now inshallah we'll be doing with a great speed